me, Max. You set me up. No, I didn't set you up. You lied to me. No, I'm trying to help you. Let me help you. What's going on Falcons fans, Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown. And if you're new here, welcome. No game recap versus the Giants this week. Even though I kind of recapped the game in my uh, reaction video I made last Sunday going over the Falcons first dub, finally, for the season. Uh, I mean, it's week three, so I don't want to say finally, but this team felt like it was going to take a long time to win a game. But anyway, in this video, we're going to go over a topic that I feel is not only a little more interesting than a game recap, but I also think it's a little important to talk about. And we're going to go over this Atlanta Falcons offense. And I have something that maybe will kind of worry us Falcons fans and disappoint us and make us kind of feel a little angry, I guess. But... Let's just face it, the Atlanta Falcons offense has actually been very disappointing for like the past three seasons at this point. You look at 2019 and everyone's like, oh, the Falcons brought in Dirk Cutter. Now that Steve, uh, Steve Sarkeesian is gone, this offense could be right back to how they were in 2016 because they still got Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and the offense was very disappointing. And then in 2020, oh, well, now that we got Hayden Hurst and Todd Gurley, this offense could be one of the best in the league, and we have a lot of former first-round picks, and they were very disappointing. And then this year in 2021, now that Dan Quinn is gone and Dirk Cutter, we got Arthur Smith and Kyle Pitts, and this offense is like the worst it's looked in a while. So uh, I feel it maybe it's time to just stop saying that the Atlanta Falcons offense has potential to be one of the best if not the best in the lead, because for three straight seasons, they've shown that something is not clicking for this offense. But in this video, we're gonna go over the 2021 offense in specific, because that's really the only one that matters right now. We're in the 2021 season. And to me, there are four pretty obvious reasons on why this offense is just not very good right now. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, what you think about my takes here, but I feel this is actually pretty straightforward here. So let's go over it. The first reason on why the Atlanta Falcons offense to me is very disappointing is because of Arthur Smith. And it's not even just because he's a first year head coach and he has to learn how it works in the NFL as a head coach and whatnot. But another thing is, if you remember, I made a Dirty Bird Discussions podcast episode Going over how I really didn't like that they made Arthur Smith play the role as offensive coordinator and head coach, basically. Like, I know they named Dave Ragone offensive coordinator, but not really in a way. Like, Arthur Smith is the one calling the plays, and that one actually, I think, was my most viewed podcast episode. And so far, that take is kind of aging well, man. I, I did not like that Arthur Smith, a first-year head coach was playing the role of two positions in the NFL. Like, that, that just first off never really works when a coach plays two positions. Like, you saw Bill O'Brien struggle to be general manager and head coach. Bill Belichick actually kind of struggles to be a general manager, but he's a good head coach. Uh, and then Dan Quinn, of course, struggled as a head coach, but couldn't be head coach and defensive coordinator. Andy Reid, everyone always wants to point to him and be like, oh, well, look at him. He's a head coach and he calls the play. So he's basically offensive coordinator. Like the difference is that he has experience, but Arthur Smith has zero, like zero experience as head coach, none. And you're giving him too many responsibilities. And on top of that, you add in Dave Ragone, who's never been an offensive coordinator in his life. And it's like, oh, well, Dave Ragone is going to sit behind Arthur Smith and just learn behind him. So that way in 2022, he can step in and call the offensive plays because he's learned behind Arthur Smith. I think that's a terrible idea because the offense is going to look the same. Like the offensive play calls this year are being called by someone that's just learning how being a head coach works. And so the team is kind of just playing offense with these play calls by someone that's just kind of learning. And then... You add in Dave Ragone, and the offense is still going to look the same because Dave Ragone is just going to learn how to be an offensive coordinator. If this was a transitional year for Arthur Smith and uh, Dave Ragone, like a first-year head coach and a first-year offensive coordinator, why didn't you just, like, give them, like, their role year one if this was a transitional year? Like, Arthur Smith should have just been head coach and got that experience in year one, and Dave Ragone should have got 
offensive coordinator experience in year one. Don't make Dave Ragone get it in year two because he's going to be learning and the offense will look the exact same as it does this year. So I thought that was kind of a head scratcher there from the Falcons. So that's just one reason why this offense stinks. The second reason here is... I don't know, maybe we could actually like utilize our fourth overall pick in Kyle Pitts, who should be winning Offensive Rookie of the Year, and I do still think there's a chance he can do that. There's still a lot of football to be played, but like, just why do they not give him the ball? Like, just why? Why? Why, 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 why? That is all I want to know. Just why? Why do you not give Kyle Pitts the ball? It's so frustrating. They give Hayden Hurst the ball. They give Calvin Ridley the ball. They even give Lee Smith the ball. They give Alamide Zacchaeus the ball. Cordell Patterson the ball. Why do they not give Kyle Pitts the ball? It, like, it makes literally no sense. And don't tell me the Falcons don't trust him. Like, are you kidding me? Kyle Pitts has been the clutch player on offense this year besides maybe Cordell Patterson. Every single catch Kyle Pitts has, it's always like this big third or fourth down conversion. Like, he has that one-hander and then this big gain on third or fourth down. And then against the Giants, he got them in field goal position to win the game. So don't tell me the Falcons don't trust him because he's been the most clutch weapon on offense. Like, whenever Kyle Pitts gets the ball, he moves the ball for the Falcons. He gets in momentum and then the team just thinks, maybe we don't need that. Like, what? What are we doing here? What, why are you not utilizing Kyle Pitts? That's just, I can't stress it enough. Just why? So frustrating, honestly. So maybe like utilize your offensive rookie of the year should be offensive rookie of the year. And maybe you could actually like, like look a lot better on offense because he's, he's legit. He's very legit. So I don't know, just a thought, just give him the ball. The third reason on why this offense stinks is self-explanatory. I'm not going to explain it for that long. Is the offensive line. Oh, this offensive line is a mess. You got Jake Matthews and Chris Lindstrom, and that's it. The other players, as much as I do always brag about how right I was that the Falcons were going to draft an offensive lineman first round of the 2019 draft, getting Chris Lindstrom was great, but I will admit trading up to get Chris, uh, uh, Caleb McGarry it's not really looking like it was the right thing to do because Caleb McGarry is having his worst season yet. And I don't even know if he's going to be with us next year. Caleb McGarry is just not looking good. I think you might want to find a right tackle very soon. Matt Hennessy was very high on him when we drafted him last year. And I had a lot of high expectations for him this year. I had him as one of the potential breakout players this year. I was like, okay, he sat behind Alex Mack. He, he knows something about being a center now. He actually even already got experience in the NFL being left guard or whatnot. So, you know, he's got NFL experience already. With NFL experience and learning behind Alex Mack, this dude is ready to ball out. And they did draft Drew Dolman. Maybe that, you know, potential replacement there is going to motivate him to be like, no, I'm the starting center. I'm going to show you why. But Matt Hennessy has not looked good. I, I will admit it, man. He's not making me look smart for believing in him. Matt Hennessy has got to step things up. And then, my goodness, Jalen freaking Mayfield. Do we even need to go over that? Like, he's like the biggest meme since Vic Beasley. Like, Jalen Mayfield is just such an embarrassment at left guard. So, this offensive line needs help. And then the fourth thing. Now, I know Matt Ryan truthers are going to, like, point a gun at my head when I say this, but whatever. Matt Ryan's arm talent is very much regressing. Like, Matt Ryan is still a good player. Like, yeah, he still cares. You can tell he really wants to win out there. He's got, you know, not mobility necessarily, but for a immobile quarterback, he's got some mobility. Like, we literally saw him hurdle a defender against the Bucks to get a two-point conversion. So, say what you will about that. But, uh, and he stays healthy. He's still a very good decision maker. He's still the quarterback we all know, really. It's just, to me, I think the arm talent very clearly fell off. Like, those deep balls are just not very pretty. So, Matt Ryan's arm talent is very clearly not what it used to be, and it won't get any better considering he is aging. So, to me, those are the four pretty obvious signs on why this offense is not very good right now in 2021. And... It might not be like the easiest fix ever. Two things I just don't know if you actually even can fix. Like Matt Ryan is aging, so I don't know if you can 
fix his arm, but you can maybe call better play calls that are like short to intermediate passes or passes down the middle of the field. But as far as like deep throws or whatnot, vertical throws, I don't know. Like I'm not counting on Matt Ryan on that one just yet. Um, and then the offensive line just, I don't know what to tell you. Like they got to get better. But the two things that I actually feel can be fixed like right now is the Arthur Smith and the coaching situation and Kyle Pitts. With Arthur Smith and Dave Ragon, I know I just kind of explained it, but if this is a transitional year for both of them, like why not just make Arthur Smith play the role as head coach only? Get an experience there. And then get Dave Ragon experience at offensive coordinator. Just, it's right there. Like get them experience. Like don't have Dave Ragon learn how it works in year two, because then the offense is going to look the same as it did this year. Like, make them both learn how it works. It's just so simple. And then another thing that is just super, super simple that I'm so surprised they're not doing is, I don't know, maybe like put Kyle Pitts in the game. Just a thought. Just, I, I you know what? I'm not even going to say more on that. Just just put Kyle Pitts in the game. It's just, just do it. It's, it's, a, it's a thought. But those are my thoughts on that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And I will see you guys with a video this Friday going over a game preview versus the Washington football team. Hopefully we can get another dub here and go two and two and maybe things could look up despite the rant. So love and appreciate y'all for the support and as always, rise up.